Welcome back. This is lesson 8.7, problem solving with fraction equations. I will be able to solve algebraic equations, even those with fractions, using inverse operations. I will be able to show all of my steps correctly. and check my solution. Vocabulary for this lesson, we have equation, which is a mathematical statement that two expressions are equal to each other. Solution is a value for a variable that makes an equation true. And inverse operations are operations that undo each other. They're opposite of each other. Example would be like addition and subtraction. Okay, so for each of these, we're going to define a variable, write an equation, and then solve the equation for the problems below. So here it says, two-thirds of the middle school voted to go skiing instead of ice skating. 132 voted for skiing. Okay, I need you to think this is the part that voted for skiing. So two-thirds voted for skiing. So the part we don't know is the entire school. So variable, I'm going to put S for total students. Doesn't matter what letter we pick. Nope, as long as I know what I'm talking about. So two thirds of, that's a clue word right there, of. Two thirds of, that means I'm timesing, with two thirds of all the students. So I'm going to put S here. Two-thirds of all the students voted for skiing. So how many voted for skiing? 132. See how we got all that information into an equation? So now how would I find the solution? Well, now I undo what happened. So here, two-thirds of the students is 132. So to undo timesing by two-thirds, I'm going to divide by two-thirds. So if I divide by two-thirds on this side, I'm going to divide by two-thirds on this side. Now, because this is a fraction, we want to make our whole number of fractions. So I'm going to write that over one. And we're dividing. So because of that, two-thirds divide by two-thirds, anything divided by itself is going to give me one. The whole purpose of doing that was to get S all by itself. One S. But I do it to this side. Now this is where I'm going to use what I know about dividing fractions to KFC. So I'm going to keep 132 on top over 1, flip the second, so 3 over 2, and change the sign to multiply. Okay, I'm going to cross cancel here. I can divide both of these by 2, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, 132 divided by 2, I'm not sure, so let's do that over here. 132 divided by 2, 2 goes into 13 6 times, so minus 12 gives me 1, bring down the 2, 2 goes into 12 6 times. So I got 66 here. So that means 1 third is 66, or half of it is 66. Now I'm going to do 66 times 3 across the top which, once again, I don't know that one off the top of my head, so I'm going to put, I'm going to do that over here, so 66 times 3, 3 times 6 is 18, regroup 1, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 more is 19, so I get 198 over 1 times 1, which is 1, so my solution is 198. Let's check my answer, though, before I say for sure that that is correct. So I'm going to plug my answer into my original equation. So 2 thirds of 198, let's see if this really works, should give me 132. Okay, cross cancel where I can, divide by 3, I can divide 198 by 3. And this is where, if you have a calculator, your checking can be a little easier, but you can do it by hand. 3 goes into 19 6 times, minus 18 leaves me with 1, bring down the 8, 
3 goes into 18 6 times, minus 18 gives me 0. So I get 66 on top, times 2 over 1, 66 times 2, 2 times 6 is 12, regroup 1, 2 times 6, or two, times 6 is 12, plus 1 more is 13. So I get 132 over 1, which is the same as 132. What does that tell me? That tells me my original answer was correct. So the solution is that S equals 198. Because this is a story problem, I need to put that title, or that label on there. It was 198 students in the school. Okay, let's try the next one. Emily had some gas in her car. She used four and one third gallons and now has two and five six gallons left. So what's the variable? What is it we don't know? I don't know how much gas she had in her car to begin with. So I'm going to say G for gas. Um, gas gallons of gas to start. Okay. Now, she had some, then what happened? She used, so I'm going to minus, four and one third, and now has two and five sixths. So how do I undo minusing? Well, I have to add it back to figure out what it was. So I'm going to add 4 and 1 third. That's going to cancel out and leave me with 0. So now I've got G by itself. But I have to add 4 and 1 third back here. Problem with fractions is we have to have common denominators to add. Well, 3 and 6, I can turn 3 into 6 easy. So I'm going to times this by 2 and times this by 2. And that gives me... 2 6, which is the same as 1 third. So I got 5, 2 and 5 6, plus 4 and 2 6. 5 plus 2 gives me 7. Actually, I feel it's just so much easier just to make them both improper. So I'm going to do this real quick. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 5 is 17. So 17 6 plus 4 times 6 is 24, plus 2 more, 26. Six. Now, what does that do for me? That gives me seventeen and twenty-six that I can just easily add together. So twenty-six plus seventeen. You could use your calculator. You can also do it by hand, which is why I'm showing you that you don't have to rely on that calculator for everything. Six plus seven is thirteen. Regroup one. One plus two is three. Plus one more is. So I get 43 over 6, which because we had mixed numbers in my original and this would be a final answer, I'm going to turn it into a mixed number. So 6 goes into 43, well 6 times 7 is 42, so that would be 7 whole groups and 1 left over. So 7 and 1 6 gallons. Okay, I got an answer, but I'm going to check it. Let's see if it really works. So 7 and 1 6 and I'm going to minus 4 and 1 third because that was the original equation. I'm just replacing 7 and 1 sixth for G. And make sure this really does work. I need to get 2 and 5 sixths when I'm done. Okay, these don't have, I'm just going to make them improper fractions, but I want common denominators. So I'm going to times this by 2 and this by 2, which gives me 6, 2. So this would be the same as 4 and 2 6, which we already did up here. We know that that's the same as 26, 6, 42 plus 1 is 43. Looking good because that's what we had over here. And now 43 minus 26, we want to make sure we end up with 2 and 5, 6, which was in 6, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 5 more is 17. So if we end up with 17, 6, we know we did it correctly. So 43 minus 26, after all that hard work, 43 minus 26. 3 minus 6 I can't do, so I'm going to borrow. That gives me 3. Regroup over here, 13. 13 minus 6 is 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. 
So I end up with 17, 6, which is the same as 2 and 5, 6. What does that tell me? My solution is correct. So our final answer is 7 and 1, 6 gallons of gasoline. Now the problem with fractions is it's a lot of work, but you can do it. All right, let's try this one. Mrs. Geiger needs to have three times as many cakes to feed the entire grade as she does her homeroom. It took seven and one half cakes to feed the entire grade. Okay, what's my variable here? What is the thing I don't know? I don't know how many to feed the entire class, or I don't know how many to feed my class, my homeroom. We know how much to do the entire grade. And it takes three times the homeroom to feed the grade. So the variable is I'm going to use H for cakes needed for homeroom. Okay, there's my variable. Now my equation three times as many cakes to feed the entire as she does her homeroom. So three times the homeroom would give me the entire grade. So the entire grade was seven and a half. So how am I going to figure out how many it takes for my homeroom? Well, times by three is the opposite is to divide by three. So if I divide by three, that gives me H on this side. I'm gonna divide this side by three. Now when we're with fractions, KFC, keep the first, let the second change the sign. So I'm going to make this improper as well. So 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 more is 15. So this would be the same as 15 over 2. Keep the first, flip the second. So I'm going to flip this to 1 over 3 because it makes sense. I'd need one third the amount of cakes to feed my homeroom. Now cross cancel if I can. I see that 3 and 15 share a common factor of 3. So divide this by 3, I get 1. Divide this by 3, I get 5. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. So 2, 5 over 2 is the same as 2 and 1 half. So I got a solution of H equals 2 and one half cakes. Let's see if this is true. I'm going to check. I'm going to do three times two and one half. That's what I got for my answer and see if I get seven and one half. So with fractions we want them improper so I'm going to make this three over one. I'm going to make this one two times two which is four plus one more is five. Makes sense because that's what we had over here before we turned it back into a mixed number. Okay, times, and we want to end up with seven and a half. Let's see what happens. Can't cross cancel anything, so I get 15 over two. And 15 over two is the same as seven and one half. That matches there. That tells me that this really is my solution. Two and a half cakes are needed to feed my homeroom. Okay, we got two more. Karen is making one and a half batches of cookies. She put in three and th three fourths cups of sugar. So what is it we don't know here? If she's making one and a half batches, I don't know how much sugar she needs. That's for all. That's all the sugar she put in. I don't know how much sugar she needs for one batch. So I'm going to use S, and that's going to represent the sugar needed for one batch. All right, my equation, if she's making one and a half batches, that's timesing. I'm taking one and a half and timesing it by how much I already was going to use. So one and a half times S, and the total amount of sugar she put in was three and three fourths cups. So how am I going to figure out how much sugar is needed for just one batch? Well, I have to divide by one and one half here. Remember, anything divided by itself is one, and that leaves me with one s all by itself. So let's divide this side by one and one half. Now, when we deal with mixed numbers, we don't like them, we make them improper fractions. So three times four is 12, plus three more 
is 15, so I get 15 over 4. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 more is 3, so 3 over 2. Now that's still division though. When I'm dealing with division, I want to keep the first, flip the second, so that would give me 15 over 4 times, flip the second, 2 over 3. Cross cancel if you can. 2 goes into both of these, so this gives me 2 here and a 1 here. 3 goes into both of these, that gives me a 1 here and a 5 here. So now I've got 5 times 1, which is 5, 2 times 1, which is 2, five, and that is the same as 2 and 1 half. Okay, I think my solution is 2 and a half cups of sugar for a regular batch. Let's check. So I'm going to plug in what I know. 1 and 1 half times 2 and 1 half should give me 3 and 3 fourths. Improper fractions, 3 over 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 more is 5 times, nothing can cross cancel, I end up with 15 across the top, 4 across the bottom, 4 goes into 15, 1, 2, 3 times, and that would leave us with 3 left over, oh look at that, it matches, that tells me S equals 2 and 1 half, now what was it? It needs a label. Cups of sugar. See how we're just applying what we know with fractions. Okay, last one. Ryan got four-fifths of, right there, that's a keyword, of the questions on his, correct on his test. He got 60 questions correct. So what's the thing we don't know? We don't know how many questions are on the test. So let's use T for total test questions. So my equation, four-fifths of the questions, so four-fifths of is the same as times, so four-fifths times t equals 60 questions correct. So we're going to figure out how many questions he got right. So I'm going to divide by four fifths because that will cross that will cancel out and give me one t. Gets t all by itself. That means I have to divide this side by four fifths. This one won't be as ugly as the last one. So we keep the first, sixty over one, flip the second, five over four, change the sign. Cross cancel, I know 4 goes into both of these. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 60 divided by 4 is 15. 15 times 5 is 75 over 1. So what does that tell me? I think there's 75 questions on the test. Let's check. 4 fifths times 75 should give us 60. Let's see what happens. Cross cancel where we can. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 75 15 times, 4 times 15 is 60. So I got 60 on this side, that matches with 60 on this side. That tells me that yes, my solution is 75 total questions. Alright, rate yourself on this concept, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Be able to write a variable, write an equation, solve it, and check your solution. Take a picture and turn it on Google Classroom.